loyalty is not earned intermittently. It's earned through consistency. So mm -hmm. you want customers to be loyal, to be advocates, to stay with you in good times and bad, to you know forgive you when issues come up. You can't be inconsistent. You've got to be really trustworthy. Welcome to the Delighted Customers Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Slayton, and I'm so glad you're here. I empower leaders to turn indifferent customers into loyal fans. I talk to guests with a wide range of expertise who share meaningful insights and wisdom. We give you practical tips and proven frameworks and share ways to help you delight your customers. Well, welcome to episode two of two with my special guest, Rob Markey. Rob is a customer and employee experience expert throughout the globe. He is a 30 plus year veteran at Bain. He is co-inventor of Net Promoter System. And uh, my gosh, he co-authored the book, The Ultimate Question 2.0. What uh, more do I need to say about Rob Markey? But the reason I didn't mention this in the first episode was it, it originally was not intended to be a podcast. We were using it as a tool to help educate students in the Michigan State University course that I teach on customer relationship management in the master's program there in customer experience management. And I thought it turned out so well that I asked Rob if he would be okay with me including it as part of a podcast or Two, two part episode and he said sure so that's what you're getting to listen to uh, one of my favorite podcasts and I hope you enjoy as we explore a bit of a case study about what's happened recently when it comes to loyalty loyalty programs and the airline industry take a listen what are common mistakes leaders make when it comes to customer loyalty there's a bunch. I, I mean, I, having done this for a long time, I see a lot of them. Um, one of the most common ones is thinking, if we just change the incentives, if we just change the metrics and the incentives, everything's going to work out. And so, especially um, in the early days of Net Promoter, we saw a lot of this, but we still see it today. People saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure, and then I'm going to give people goals on that measurement, and then everything's going to be great, and I don't have to spend a ton of time worrying about this because I changed everybody's incentives and they're not entirely wrong. Like, yeah, you need to be able to measure your progress and, and you need to, it needs to be important. And they think that by putting it in people's compensation, it makes it important. Again, not wrong. Um, but it's, it's a, uh, never sufficient. Like you have to actually, um, create, behavior change and support people through the behavior change if you want different outcomes. Second, um, when the minute you put something into people's compensation and incentives, you invite pushback. Well, that's not the right metric. No, that's an analysis paralysis. Well, what if we did it this way? Um, can you dig, 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 what are the components? Uh, the weighting is wrong. And importantly, when the, the, the metrics derive from customers and their feedback, you invite what a lot of people call gaming, trying to convince customers to give you a higher score. Hey, you know, you might not know this, but only a nine or 10 counts for me. <laughs> or, you know, I, it, for me to stay in the top group and to send my kids to college, I need, you know, um, I call it fraud because honestly it's it, it, it's an extreme term for it but you know it's 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 people asking customers to lie so yeah. they yeah. get paid more that's fraud right anyway that, so so that's one one category is just like trying to do everything through the metrics in this second category is of of mistakes is hey we're going to put in a loyalty program and i put quotes around that word that term loyalty program and that's good. We're going to use that to earn, you know, to drive loyalty. Two problems. Um, one, it, what people call loyalty programs are really the rewards programs. They're, they're, they often are bribes for people to, you know, use you more. 
when they're done poorly, and, and not all of them are, but when they're done poorly, they basically amount to discounts and a cost of doing an increased cost of doing business. They can actually competitively just destroy an industry and send them down a path of spending too much on their customers. But um, <clears throat> the second thing is the over relying on that. And, and it puts too much emphasis on the, the rational value dimension and not enough on the emotional and experiential. Hmm. So done well, a rewards program delivers not just discounts or you know points that you can use to buy stuff, but it delivers, it, it gives you access to a better experience, you know, faster delivery, um, upgrades in you know airlines, uh, access to clubs, things like that. Um, in retail, sometimes it's you know exclusive access to new products before the rest of the public is gets access to them, or early access to a sale that was going to happen anyway. But you, know, you you special shopper can get there before it it's picked over. Um, those are those are experiential elements of in rewards program that actually do operate on non rational, you know, like the other dimensions, experiential and emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the final thing I would say is, is like really common mistakes is, um, people think that earning loyalty is a, is, is something you do as a discretionary thing in good times. And then when you get into a downturn or, you know, the a tough quarter, you pull back all the funding. They don't, they don't do this intentionally. It's just, you know, well, we have to cut, we have to, we have to save money. We, they're not, again, not wrong, but loyalty is not earned intermittently. It's earned through consistency. So mm -hmm. you want customers to be loyal, to be advocates, to stay with you in good times and bad, to, you know, forgive you when issues come up. You can't be inconsistent. You've got to be really trustworthy. Yeah. I, I think about what you're saying. I think about um, fairly recently on the news, Delta Airlines had some um, unexpected fallout, I guess, unexpected for, from their leadership uh, when they, they, I guess they were running into a problem with too many people qualifying for the elite status. So the, <clears throat> the, uh, upgrades as you described like whether it's a, a lounge you know area that was overcrowded or not able to get even though they qualified the kind of seats that they wanted or whatever whatever those were so they they diluted the value of the points yeah. um and that that kind of came like as i think about southwest who i guess the christmas season earlier had service issues um, and, and probably had some defections over that. <laughs> this is a loyalty program that went sideways over, I think the CEO finally said, I think, I think we overreached or something. What do you, what are your thoughts about that whole thing? Well, I think, I think technically what they did is I understand it and I haven't studied it in detail is that they, they made it harder to earn the elite status, but they made it so hard that very, like it was a drastic change. And I think this is back to this issue of consistency. Mm. I think that if you want to maintain the loyalty of your customers, you've got to be consistent. And therefore, um, you know, a sudden dramatic change in what it takes to earn status can be jarring and upsetting to your most loyal customers. So I don't think they were, they were probably not wrong because what happened I think was there were too many people earning the top elite status that actually made it hard for it to be valuable. Like mm. they ran out of seats for upgrades. They ran out of space in their clubs. They, there's only so much you can do experientially to, to deliver value to your, your customers. Yeah. And they needed a way to rein that in. It's just that they, they did it all at once to, to, yeah. And, and, and that, that undermined trust. It's like, a, hey, I thought the rules were this. You changed them so much that it doesn't feel fair. Yeah, it, it feels like 
when the loyalty program that you're a part of feels like you're not getting the value out of it that you maybe originally going back to your earlier statement about expectations that are formed from either from that brand or other brands and then that value uh drops then the loyalty program can in some ways make make you feel like a hostage because now if you've got a i'm not happy i don't think it's great I'm vulnerable, but if I switch, uh, switching is a pain, you know, now I got to start all over with another vendor. Yeah. I mean, I think there's good. So you, it's complex, right? Yeah. Think of, think of um, two types of customers, right? You've got people who are in hubs and they don't have much choice. They're stuck with this airline. And so they feel like the rules changed. They got kind of screwed and they don't have their hostage. They don't have another alternative. Right. And you've got other people who actually are in competitive cities where they do have choices and they have historically made the choice to swing their business to one company. And now that company is saying, well, even though you did that, it's not enough to reach the same level of benefits that you got before. I'm changing the rules on you. And now you're saying, I, but I did this thinking that I was operating under this set of rules and now you've made it a different set of rules and all that effort I put in and all the choices I made in your favor have been undermined. I could have been doing it with this other airline that didn't do that. I think that's the, the both, both situations stink. The hmm. one that's harder and the one that's worse for the airline is the one where you're in a competitive city and you have a choice and, and so then you say i'm done with you i'm gonna go with this other airline that's more stable and reliable and trustworthy and, and going back to our conversation around customer loyalty so uh and what we talked about <clears throat> in this course is trust we started with trust and now you've kind of broken broken my trust with you and to your point about the three levels the rational experiential and emotional you might have tapped right into the negative side of the emotional when you changed you moved the goalpost so what you did is you changed the rational value rules right mm. you changed the experiential value rules and it makes me reevaluate the emotional connection yeah and, and this is why I say that these three things are all linked because what you do on the rational and the experiential side affects your evaluation of the emotional and vice versa. The lens through which I read the rational is largely an emotional lens, yeah. you know, and, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt if you've earned that trust up to a point. And once you break it, like th here's another interesting net promoter fact. Um, when you really look at people who are detractors, especially on the extreme end, the zeros through threes typically on the likelihood to recommend, you find two different populations that are pretty distinct. One are people who are exceptionally loyal. They were, they were promoters and you have broken their trust in some very serious way. In many cases, they want, they desire, they hope, they beg you to recover and treat them right so that they can be promoters again. The other category are people who are so disaffected that they want nothing to do with you anymore. I am, I hate you guys. And I don't just, I don't just hate you actually. It's more like, I don't care about you anymore. Because you know, the opposite of, of, of love is, is not actually hate, it's indifference. Um, I'm right. done. I'm done. I'm, 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 I don't even hate you. I just am done. Yeah. And um, what I worry about with like the example you were giving with the airline is um, there's a lot of people who at the moment are in this like, I really want you to make this right because I trusted you and you broke my trust. If they don't take action to recover, many of those people will go, see, ya. I'm done. And that's this extreme break in trust. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll be back again. <laughs>
<laughs> sadly, sadly, for many of us, that that has been our lives for too long. <laughs> well, Rob, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for helping educate and for what you do to lift up customer experience as a profession. Mark, it's always a pleasure. I, I, I think you know this. I, um, I really enjoy talking to you. I think you get it. And um, I always learn from my discussions with you. So thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for listening to the Delighted Customers Podcast. I'd like to ask you a favor. If you have enjoyed this episode or any of my other ones, hit subscribe or follow. I've got a lot of other great guests that are coming up and a lot of other great content, and I don't want you to miss anything. You can find any links or references on the show in the show notes, and you can find those on my website at empoweredcx.com.